Okay, so, yep. Oh, okay, well, go back a bit. All right. So, um, I travel on London Underground every day, uh, often to go to spiritual meetings, and being in the tube, uh, like, uh, most of the time being in the tube is, 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 is quite easy now, because you have to do a lot of transcending, transcending work in the tube. But I wanted to share a story, I think I wrote about it in my book, Bulletproof Peace. But anyway, I was on the tube, and I used to find it very difficult when people would sit next to me and they would fidget. You know, they'd start fidgeting, and I'd, I, I would notice, and I'd feel very irritated, because they're just like twiddling their thumbs, or like nervously, they feel agitated, and then I'd, I'd, I'd pick it up. So I did, uh, and then I, one day I realized, every time someone sits next to me who fidgets, I'd feel irritated. So I just did the observer. One day, I remember, oh, something came into consciousness, like, do the observer. I do the observer. And so they were sitting there, and I was like noticing they were like uh, fiddling. And I said, well, what's observing? What's observing me and them fiddling? And then I said, oh, yeah, there's a witnesser. There's a witnesser witnessing me and them fidgeting and witnessing that my ego is troubled by their fidgeting. But it was witnessing everything. I went to and then what's witnessing that witness, sir? And I detached from even the story of me being agitated by them, and I lost interest in their, in their and then it, and it disappeared. And, uh, and for me, that's the thing with just every day, if you travel on the London Underground, all these things that people do that irritate, irritated me, you just like keep going to the observer. And what would happen is each time you did that, the tube journeys got less and less irritating because I wouldn't really pick up things. So in the beginning, it would be like, well, if someone would fidget, if someone would do this, if someone would do that, and then you have to go to the observer. And each time you did the observer, then eventually, whenever you get on the tube, like, you, don't, you never notice anyone fidget. Like you, people, it's like your experience becomes no one fidgets anymore after you've transcended fidgeting. So you don't experience that, and then you transcend the next thing that a people do, a person does that irritates you. Uh, and in that way, um, you know the, jo the the journeys in the tube most of the time, you don't you don't notice anything. Yeah, you can speak if you want. No, yeah, it's great. Uh, it also um, it's interesting because every time I'm more in self, yes. small self, in yes. separation, all of that. Comes banging out the door, and like all of that comes biting me in the bottom. <laughs> but if I'm not, yes. If I'm more connected, if I'm connected with mm -hmm. something that is higher than me, and I'm letting it go, it's not so much about me. It's not. It's not about me. It's not about trying to get to that specific place and that specific time. You know, that hurry and indecision. Those yeah. two pasts that. And I have is just letting go whatever God plan is for me, my understanding of God. I I get much bigger space to actually connect with others, and instead of feeling uh, resisting, yes, and uh, and judging, I go like, yeah, I, I I can go there definitely. I can reach out for my mobile phone and fidget and. And I can do that because I feel restless, because I don't want to, I, I just have a, 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 a thought of fear, and I'm going, for, and something shifts in my, in my day. I, you know. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, you know, if you can let go. I remember in the uh, early years, um, so many things would make me agitated you know, about life, when I was in a low level of consciousness, very ego-identified. Like, if I was going to be late, I'd get really, really stressed, you know, I'd get so super, super stressed, I'm going to be late. You'd go around in my head and I'd start to feel, I mean, I remember, and nowadays that never happens, more or less never happens. It's like, I remember once, many years ago, it was like a mystical thing. I was getting so worked I was going to be late for an appointment. Uh, and then, and I started to pray. I did actually the Lord's Prayer that time because I was getting so like anxious, like I'm going to be late and I was like frustrated. And at a certain point in the Lord's Prayer, it's like 
I let it go. Mm -hmm. I felt blissed out, and he goes, so what? You're going to be late. Mm -hmm. and, then, and, 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 and then just doing general spiritual work, and then it would be like, it's okay to be late. Mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes I'd find like, the ego would track that it's okay to be late, but then you'd still be blissed out, and you still arrive on time. Mm -hmm. Like the, the mystical would happen because you just like didn't care, mm -hmm. you know. And you, like you'd see the thing is, oh, you probably won't arrive on time. And then you forget about it, and then suddenly you're arriving on time. So the, these type of things are the more you sort of let go, and then as you completely let go, then it's it's like it's like it's not that important if you're late, and you you're, you're relaxed when you're late and stuff like that. So all of these things are just like these inner thick torments of the ego, like someone's fidgeting, or you're going to be late, or all of these things, and then eventually you don't, you know, you transcend them, and it doesn't really matter. And sometimes when it doesn't matter, you, you often arrive on time, funny enough. Yeah, um, and it, it, they do come from a place of separation. Yes. Because uh, being late is definitely a huge one for me. And i got to bring God there and ask, what's the fear? And the fear for me in being late a lot of times in my life was I fear others' judgment of mm. myself. Now, if, if I bring God, whatever God is for me, into that, and like you say, it breaks that separation, I let go, and, and I get much more <laughs> patient and much more understand you know, about others actually being late in a certain meeting that I have with them too. Because I step out of that separation, you know, uh, makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It reminded me of something. You know, it's like I remembered I I used to have this obsession about arriving on time when I was when I was going to spiritual meetings, and later, you know, as I started to let go of that, it goes, you know, you'd you'd like get different thoughts. Oh, I bet I'm supposed to be late, so I sit next to someone I'm supposed to sit next to. Mm. You know, it's like the and I've actually had that. I've experienced it. It's like you know, no, 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 I'm supposed to be late, so that that's going to be the only seat left. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to sit next to them because I have to, like, and I would sometimes happen, you know, like, yeah. it was really important that I sat on that seat. Yeah. And that normally I would sit on this seat, but it, the universe needed me to be late so that I would sit on that seat. Yeah. So that I could speak to that person and there was something important. So it's like that now. It's like, oh, okay, like my ego might think, oh, it'd be nice, and then it's not. And then, oh, well, something interesting. You know, for some reason, you know, that it's being orchestrated in that way. That's I, and I, you know, I had the thing of... Um, I've had a few of these things, actually. I've had, the, you know, like... But this is slightly different, like Grace looking after you. Mm. I remember once uh, I was going to Brixton. I was going to Brixton and, and I arrived at Brixton tube station and there were all these police banners all over the place. Uh, no, it was something uh, else actually. Uh, it was something else in Brixton. All these banners around, and there had been a guy stabbing people on the stairs, uh, and and they just they just cordoned off the place, mm. and I had missed it. Mm. I had missed it probably for like twenty minutes early, you know. Then um, then uh, you know I would have been right there when the guy was knifing everyone. So there was that one, and there, there's another one actually, where, where the, there was the bombing of the tubes. No. There was the bombing of the tubes in London. And again, I was on the tube. I think I was probably on the... I got through on the tubes before it happened. You know, so all of those things. So when you, once you start to like trust the universe yeah. and let go of, I have to arrive on time, mm -hmm. And then, and then, you, as you let go of this stuff, you see, no, everything is perfect, mm -hmm. you know, or there's something good. For some reason, you know, I need to be in a different place. Like, I might like to sit at the front of the meeting, but today it's important for me, for some reason, to be sitting right at the back. And, and, and I mean, trust, and I trust that, you see, yeah. rather than, the, oh, it's all wrong now because I don't get my favorite seat at yeah. the front, kind of thing. Yes. And it has nothing to do with my little plans or desires. Yeah. Like most of life has nothing to do with that. As you said, yeah, I start seeing that more over. Yeah, I do have all the plans and all, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great.